Hi guys, it's Michele and today we're gonna have a look of the WZ model 1.4. This is tier 9 tank and we're gonna start with the armor model. After that we're gonna go with some stats and some numbers, compare it and showcase the gameplay. Now let's start with the armor. Armor frontally pretty pretty tough. Threat almost impregnable unless you are firing at the commander cupola. Second thing, uh, these are the peak nose, so it's angled if you're going with the peak nose up and trying to side scrape. Remember that you're gonna at least reduce the effectiveness of this armor and WZ is not very much suited for side scraping around the corners or angling the armor because armor is already angled just like a situation with the IS-3 and the T-10 Russian tank. Second thing also is uh, you have very weak lower plate, which is a frontal weak spot for this tank. Also weak spot is your left side. Your left side actually over the here is a big, really big ammo rack and a lot of times I was destroyed because the enemy light tank got up on my left side or enemy tank destroyer and just one shot at me in this area. So that's pretty much annoying. Also RT is your biggest problem because you don't have any armor. Sides are covered with uh, effective armor, which is also a uh, spaced armor, but the bigger guns of 100mm and up with 180 penetration and up will have no problems penetrating. Well, 180 may have some problems, but about 200mm, definitely everything will paint this side. Not to mention the rear. Rear is pretty much a zone for every scout tank in the world. So basically, armor model as you can see, frontal, very good, turret, very good, with some weak spots glaring on this tank. Now let's jump into the garage so we can look at some numbers and comparison before we go into battle. Okay, now when we saw the damage module and the armor module, let's check out the survivability. It tells us we have 1850 hit points, it tells us we have 120 millimeters in the hole, 80 on the sides, 60 on the rear with 120 on the sides of the turret and 60 on the rear of the turret and front of, front of the turret is 230. With the angling on this thing, so your only mm, uh, armor on your this tank will be the front of the turret and uh, you have to actually hide this few weak spots that you have. Also the weak spot is right down here and if the enemy has a good penetration number on you, they can easily get your Amorak. So keep in mind on that. This thing has been Amorak for me as long as for some leopard drivers. It's notorious, I must admit. Especially on this side. So this has a peak nose. In this 120 arm millimeters of armor are definitely increasing. But if this peak nose you, let's say, flatten out, you're gonna have some problems, baby. You're gonna be hit quite hard and quite a lot. Of course, don't forget there is the other weak side, weak spot. Anyway, mobility-wise, it's very good. It's almost as good as some medium tanks and can actually provide backup for your medium rush or cover the flanks of very heavily armed, armored tanks. With 50 km top speed, 32, 32 uh, degrees of hull traverse in a second, which is pretty pretty good. Concealment not so good, basically this is a heavy tank, don't rely on you to get unspotted. Spotting is 470 meters, which is average for a heavy tank. Don't rely on this tank to outspot enemies like 1317, uh, DMX, 1390 scout and all the stuff. So you'll be much safer for you to rely on your scouts, on your long range TDs, basically your it is that can spot a lot for you and uh, be the flanker and assister for your allies. Now talking about the assisting power and your firepower is basically around this. Your firepower is consisted in this gun, the main 130mm gun. 244 millimeters of AP round penetration, 340 for your heat, 65 for your HE. This is how I use my and I'm 
not relying much on HE, I only keep it there to re reset those necessary resets. And if I'm lucky, get a good shot on the enemy RT, on the enemy Rheinmetall Borsig. Anyway, you're gonna have some around amount of damage which will go around 1, 450 to 490, depending on your shots and your RNG. The dispersion of this gun is 1, 0 0.4. And aim time is uh, 2.10, 2.9 actually. And with the numbers that I managed to get down on this gun, I managed to get down as 2.66, yeah, 2 seconds 66 aiming time, 0 0.37 dispersion on 100 meters, which is good, but not sniperish good. You cannot rely on this tank to hit and snipe the enemy from long ranges. You have to be stationary for quite a lot and that's not recommended for this tank. And if you are gonna go for a play style that's similar to, let's compare, T10, the X uh, IS-8, or the old players of course, the IS-8 WZ is basically a clone copy of the T10 with a bit better gun. Let me just show you, the T10 has 122mm gun, WZ has 130 and these are the stats so your AP round basically standard AP alpha damage is a bit better just a bit better but T10 as you can see is a bit better in rate of fire reload time and uh, damage per minute while the turret traverse is actually as you can see quite similar of course you have almost the same uh, gun depression but the problem is with the gun elevation on the Chinese is much much better so if someone is above you, the Chinese can hit him, while the Russians are going to struggle a bit. Armor-wise, availability is almost the same as you can see over here with 50 feet points, which are basically negligible in the overall scale. And you have 230 to 250 millimeters of armor, so basically both of these tanks are used in the same manner as a backup for the medium tanks or a flanking support fire for your top armored heavies because the mobility as you can see are pretty pretty good of course their concealment rating is not so good for a heavy because they are of course heavy tanks and heavy tanks by default don't have very good spotting or very good concealment all in all this tank is pretty average so let's jump into the game so i don't bore you anymore i get you to sleep with my voiceover in the garage and so we are today in the assault mode. Remember, assault mode is a mode where you actually don't have to defend. Well, you can defend if you're in defense position, but we are on the assaulting team, so that means we don't have any base that we have to defend. Uh, passiveness on this mode doesn't pay off. Basically what you need to do is to provide the scouts, the scouts are the main role of this game and if the scouts have the backup for the heavy tanks, you won the game. Basically the same stuff when you play, let's say, Malinovka or some bigger maps, or open maps, where the scouts are deter determining the results and the income of the game just by spotting the enemies. Going forward, being passive hiding in the bushes and uh, using those binos and optics to spot the enemy for you and stay alive as long as possible. That scout is a useless scout. And uh, at this moment, if you are defending, remember one thing. Scouts a bit forward, they need to sneak peek, you need to provide backup for them. If the enemy goes for them, you need to focus fire on the enemy to remove them as soon as possible. Simple. As it sounds, that's how you play defense or offense in any game. Plus, remember to distribute on the map adequately. About those details sometimes later, but now I'm gonna go for the scouts and try to remove their eyes on the T21. I'm aiming at him, but he's too well hidden for me. I'm gonna use my WZ as a medium tank, not as a heavy. And why I'm gonna do that is basically system that this thing is very fast, as you saw it before, while well, we had a run over here, and uh, sometimes RNG is grateful for this tank, sometimes it's not. That shot on the ST1 on the hit's own weak spot is uh, more than a lucky shot than a who well aim shot. Actually, I did try to aim my best, but luck was there as well. Now, 
MX12T, things no one is here, and unfortunately we find out the SC152. Now I'm having problems with gun depression and trying to at least keep me uh, myself alive, and I receive one shot, but luckily for us, as you can see, it ricocheted. And that was a stock, I think, SC152, so his zone tank, it's not very good. Actually, I would be more concerned if the SU was armed with the derf gun. The big one, the 152 gun. That gun, even if with the HE shot, will definitely do some damage to me. But he didn't pack that and we can continue forward. Unfortunately for these guys, they are totally disregarding the corner. This corner around here is one of the biggest... One of, like you can say, one of the three main spots on this map that you need to cover. If you don't cover that, you lost the game. I'm gonna show it to you. Enemy are actually gonna go into offensive this time. And they are gonna have some early successes. At the moment you have the Object 704, SDA-1 and the E-75 doing their best. Unfortunately for me, I don't have any gun depression. If the pattern was here, the guy that was uh, in the start with me, he will definitely use this thing and this position to maximum. But unfortunately I can't do that with my WZ because, as I said before, I'm lacking gun depression. And IMX is doing his best to stay alive, unfortunately E75 goes for the ram, he doesn't stay up. And for me, the T-34 is the only dude that I have left for my gun to shoot at. So, yeah, if the Allied tank was here where I, where I am at the moment, he would definitely use this thing much, much better than me. And I'm not aiming for the fullest, for the T-21, and I missed the shot. Of course, I could have waited just a bit longer to have that aim on him, on him but, you know, I rushed the shot and I missed it. The AT-15 is a very heavily armored tank destroyer and I need to actually find a weak spot to hit him, but unfortunately, as I said before, the 130mm gun is not very good for the sniping or the weak spots, unless the energy helps you out a bit. Speaking about sniping, we're gonna aim at the T-34, snapshot a bit, and that's one guy down. At the moment we see the pattern managed to destroy the Object 704, which is a very good stuff for us, and the scout is charging in, but he's doing a mistake, he doesn't have any backup, and I almost got him, but that T21 was lucky. So if you're actually charging on someone, make sure that you have backup from your own team. Or, worst case scenario, you will suffer quite a lot, as you saw right there. And right now I don't have any shots on T21, but unfortunately someone already saw me and that's the ISU which I managed to bounce. And there is the Tiger 1 and I bet the art is gonna be on my ass anytime. Uh, but before that I'm gonna use my very good penetration with AP rounds to punish the Tiger. And now the art comes in and the ISU comes in, but ISU reveals himself as he was shot shooting at me and now I can get him, track him and keep him there. One RT gets on the Tiger, I'm aiming at the ISU because he's the best, worst threat. Luckily for me, the RT of mine managed to help me out with the ISU that leaves the Tiger, and unfortunately I got shot again, and I lost quite a lot of HP. Now, as you can see, in that, that short period of time, the game totally turned around. We were losing, and suddenly we are starting to win, because the enemy found themselves in a very, very bad position haven't covered the spots adequately and they are suffering for that. And Max is now right now punishing KE4. I'm trying to get the AT-15 but unfortunately don't have any shots and because I don't have any good gun depression I'm gonna go on my left side and use the sand dune as elevation position for my shot in the KE4 which pays off quite handsomely. That's my fourth kill of the game. And uh, I'm trying to get the AT-15 but as you can see he's definitely just too well dug in, and I cannot get him. And by the time I'm focusing the AT-15, I can do something else like getting a payback on the enemy artist, for example. And I'm gonna do just right now. There's one RT, the second RT, and I'm gonna focus on the M53 because he shot me first. That's one shot kill. One uh, 212 and 12A is focusing on the AMX, and I'm gonna use that focus of his to aim and finish him off. And that's my 6th kill of the game. 
Meanwhile, T37 going for our RT. Our RT managed to defend himself with a splash and a shotgun. So that was an easy victory, yes, because the enemy was out of their positions, so he managed to get them all. Now let me show you how the stats are and how the game ended up to be. Okay, let me show you how this thing was. Uh, at the moment we have our WZ111 Model 1.4 with uh, the first class, Duelists and Fire for Effect, and also High Caliber, accompanied with the Top Gun for sk 6 kills. Team score says that we managed to do 4,279 damage with base experience of 1,214. 1, well, we managed to do a lot of damage. Also, we managed to do some spotting damage. We, let's say we shot uh, 15 times. We managed to hit 11 and pan 10 shots. We managed to do the damage, as I said before. Uh, and we also done half of that damage from a distance of more than 300 meters which is unusually rare for this tank because the RNG managed to troll him quite a lot though I must admit if I was driving a T10 Russian heavy tank or the tier 10 sorry tier 9 I would be doing a bit easier with the damage from the distance damage locked by armor was 1370 which is pretty good also I must Told you that I managed to do a lot of assisting damage with tracking and spotting, and as you can see, that very, very much paid off a lot of depths and got a lot of experience for us. So, WZ111 model 1.4. How to play it? Play it like a T10 with a bit less accurate gun than a T10 has. So, a big medium with a very hard punching gun. Anyway, that will be all for today. So like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you.